Thank you for joining us for Worship Online at Word of Life. We're glad you're here. Today we're continuing in our Experiencing God series and the theme is God Pursues, how God pursues a love relationship with you. If you're watching this on Sunday morning or anytime before Sunday morning, don't forget that this week we are adding an extra opportunity for you to dive deeper into this subject with a Zoom Bible study that Pastor Ken will be leading starting at 1045 on Sunday morning. The Zoom link and all of the other information is on the Word of Life website and also in the announcement sheet. Hope to have you join us.
God's word from 1 John chapter 4, beginning with verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We love because he first loved us. Even though God takes the initiative, even though God shows an overwhelming measure of love toward us, a love that we don't deserve, we have a special word for that, grace. Even though he has done so many great things for us, especially sending his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins, for my sins, I don't always love him. I don't always seek him. I don't always want to spend time with him. And I wanna confess that before God, and I encourage you to do the same by praying this prayer, which you see on the screen. O oh Lord, you showed your love for me by sending your only son into the world so that I might live through him. But I still sin and damage my relationship with you. Jesus sacrificed his life because it would benefit us so much. But what am I willing to give up for the good of others? If God loved us with a self-sacrificing love, we certainly ought to love each other with a self-sacrificing love. Forgive my lack of love. Forgive all my sins. Because of God's great love, he sent his son Jesus to be that atoning sacrifice for your sins, to forgive you of all your sins. So hear his pronouncement for you today. Your sins are forgiven in the name and the power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in that forgiveness. Rejoice in that love and grace from God himself. And now let us sing our next song to celebrate that forgiveness that we've received. Rage. 
Hi, boys and girls. Today we are going to be singing a song. That's why I've asked Miss Patty to help me out while I have my guitar in front of me. And um, I also just wanna let you know that our theme is God pursues a relationship with us. And we know about that love because Jesus came and he loved us. He loved us so much that he died on a cross and he rose from the dead and he gives us a place in heaven and forgiveness of sins and restores a relationship uh, between God and between us. So this song, I believe you all know it, or at least the first verse you know, so sing along. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus really does love you. He loves you a lot. So would you pray with me? Pray with me, please. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Your undeserved love. Your undeserved love. Which you show to me. Which you show to me. Help me. Help me. To love others. To love others. Give me your love. Give me your love. So that I have the power. So that I have the power. And the ability. And the ability. To love others. To love others. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We love you, God. We pray this all. We pray this all. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye, boys and girls. See you next week.
after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down I'm Pastor Ken Mitchkey, and today we're continuing with our series, our new series called Experiencing God. And today specifically, we're going to be looking at how God pursues a love relationship with you and with me. I want to start out uh, by reading a story that's either in the book or the workbook. By the way, I mentioned uh, that if you want to go into this deeper, you could take a look at uh, getting the book and I held up the workbook, but it has a different cover now. Um, and that's okay. It, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, but uh, there is also a book and you know, neither are required in order to do the Bible study that, that is going to happen on Zoom on 1045 on Sundays. Um, you can just watch this and then participate or just listen to other people's wisdom. But if you really want to get the most out of this series, um, I would say get the workbook and work through that workbook. I will warn you, it's 13 weeks long. Um, it has, I believe, five lessons every week. Uh, they'll take anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, depending upon just how fast you want to go through those. Uh, so it's pretty intensive, but it's pretty pretty good. Um, if you want, rather than to have a more inductive way of learning, if you'd rather just have somebody tell you kind of the main points, uh, the book I would recommend in that case, uh, and that will go deeper also than what we are going to do in this life lesson series. Um, I'm just kind of picking out the highlights and uh, these are the highlights of the highlights that you're getting in the life lessons uh, from that book. But all there are a lot of great stories and such. I'm going to start with one of those today. Henry Blackaby writes, when one of my children could not get his own way, he used to say, you don't love me. <laughs> Was that true? No, it wasn't true. My love had not changed. At that moment, however, my love was expressing itself differently than what he wanted. When our only daughter, Carrie, was 16, the doctors told us that she had cancer. We had to take her through chemotherapy and radiation. We suffered along with Carrie as we watched her experience the sickness that goes along with those treatments. Some people face such an experience by blaming God and questioning why he doesn't love them anymore. Carrie's cancer treatments could have been a very devastating experience for us. Was God loving us still? Yes. Has his love changed? No, his love had not changed. When you face circumstances like this, you can question and ask him to show you what is going on. And we did that. We had to ask him what we should do. We asked all those questions, but I never said, Lord, I guess you don't love me. At times I went before the Heavenly Father and I saw behind my daughter the cross of Jesus Christ. I said, Father, don't ever let me look at circumstances and question your love for me. Your love for me was settled on the cross. That has never changed and never will change for me. Our love relationship with the Heavenly Father sustained us through this very difficult time. No matter what the circumstances are, his love never changes. Long before this experience with Carrie, I had made a determination, no matter what the circumstances, I would never look at those circumstances except against the backdrop of the cross. In the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forever convinced me that he loved me. 
the cross, the death of Jesus Christ, and his resurrection are God's final, total, and complete expression that he loves us. God pursues a love relationship with you. God pursues a love relationship with you. From 1 John 4, beginning with verse 9, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. We love because he first loved us. You see, God always takes the initiative. God always takes the initiative. God took the initiative when he came to Adam and Eve. He came to Adam and Eve and he walked with them in the garden. And even after they sinned, he was the one that came looking for them. He was the one who helped restore them. He was the one that made promises to them, promises of great love, um, even after they were disobedient and didn't really believe what he said. Or you have folks like Noah. God came to Noah and said, build an ark. I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you from a flood that's going to destroy the world because I am destroying the world because it has become wicked and is no longer listening to me. And there's no hope left for them. They've hardened their hearts against me. And so he saves Noah and his family, as well as the animals of this world. Or you also have uh, folks like Abraham. God came to Abraham and said, you know, I'm going to make you a great nation and I am going to uh, make your descendants to be like the stars in the sky or the, the, the sand um, by the ocean. Abraham was selected by God and what he could not do by his own power or strength, God made possible. Or you have the folks like Moses. Moses also, um, God came to him in a burning bush and revealed himself to him and continued to reveal himself to uh, Moses as he gave him this great big assignment, assignment that Moses had no hope of being able to do on his own. He knew that he wouldn't be able to do it, but God gave him everything he needed to um, free the children of Israel from the world power of the time from Egypt and get them out of slavery and deliver them from slavery uh, to Pharaoh and slavery apart from worshiping God to um, taking them to the promised land and having them be able to worship God in the way that God wants to be worshiped. Or you have the prophets that came after Moses because the children of Israel, as you know from uh, these stories, that they kept on falling. They kept on making mistakes. God would um, give them uh, instructions and they would not follow those instructions. They would fall away from God and he would have to um, bring judgment upon them and get their attention and call them back to him. And then he, how did he do that? Well, he did that through the prophets. The prophets uh, prophesied of judgment and warned them. And if they continued in their sins, then that judgment came. And that, and, But in the end, um, he also promised that there would be some who would believe and that they would be um, rewarded. And so uh, you have this the cycle that keeps happening over and over and over again. And again, God is the one who takes the initiative, who comes to Adam and Eve, who comes to Noah, who comes to Abraham, who comes to Moses, who comes to the prophets and works through his word. Jesus comes to the disciples. The disciples didn't pick Jesus, Jesus picked them. And um, he chose them and empowered them and inspired them to, um, first a relationship with him, and then secondly, with a purpose, with a purpose to make disciples of all nations, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them everything that he had commanded. So all of this to say that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, um, believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. God always takes the initiative. 
God's love for you finds its highest expression in Jesus. God's love for you finds its highest expression in Jesus. When I asked God how much he loved me, he stretched out his hands on a cross and said this much, and then he bowed his head and died. God wants you to pursue a love relationship with him. God wants you to pursue a love relationship with him. Matthew 22, 37 through 38, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Now, if you were standing before God, could you describe your relationship to him by saying, I love you with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind? Uh, hopefully you printed out your note page and you can go ahead and circle one. Yes or no. And no, there's no in-between answer. It's yes or no. Do you love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul or not? Now, unfortunately, when I do this, I have to circle no, because if it said most of the time I love you with most of my heart and most of my mind and most of my soul, then I would be able to, with integrity, say, yeah, absolutely. But the unfortunate thing is I do not love him with my whole heart and with whole, my whole mind, with my whole soul. Um, I think way too much about myself or things that I desire or want. Um, I think of other things other than God. It's possible to serve without loving, but it's impossible to love without serving. So why do you and I exist? Well, I'll tell you why you and I exist. It's because God wanted something to love. And so he created Adam and Eve and through them created all humanity. And, uh, and he, he wants to love you. That's his primary purpose is to love you. That's why he created you. That's why you exist. But he also created you for a second reason. And that is so that you would love God, that you would love him with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind. Um, and, and also, how do you do that? Well, you do that by loving others. You know, it, it's not enough to just say, well, I love you, God, and, and I'll go to church on Sunday um, and I'll you know, read the Bible from time to time. He wants us to live what we learn. And, and that means loving others as he loved us. And that's what our text uh, for today talks about. So, so that we can love God and others. That's the second reason that you and I exist. Everything about experiencing God and knowing his will depends upon the quality of your love relationship with God. So everything about experiencing God and knowing his will depends upon the quality of your love relationship with God. And here's the problem. If that's not right, nothing in your life will be right. Nothing in your life will be right. The one thing God wants from you is to love him with all your being, to love him with all your being. How can we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked um, because we're going to talk about some ways, some things that will help us to learn to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. First of all, avoid the love killers. Avoid the love killers. Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When I was really young, um, I had a I have a sister and a brother and we would play this game called careers. It's not a popular game, but it was an interesting game. It's sort of like the, the game of life. Uh, maybe you've played that. It's one of the more popular uh, games where you basically what collect a family and collect life cards and collect money. And at the end, you count that all up and you win if you have the most successful life, I guess. Um, in careers, you collected things too. You collected um, three things. You collected money, fame, and power. Money, fame, and power. Now, it occurred to me later on that those three things are the three things that are the most common idols 
in our culture, in our society. Uh, there are people who are very strongly motivated and want to have more money, or they want to have more things that money can buy, or more trips and experiences that money can buy. Or there are people who are motivated by fame. They want people to, to get to know them. They want to be popular. They want people uh, to respect them, to be known. Or they want power. They want to be able to control things and change things and make a difference in things. And they're, they're, they, they want that. Now, does that make any of these th three things wrong? No, intrinsically, they're just fine. Money, fame, and power are useful and important. God created God-given tools. However, because they are so powerful, especially in the human mind, um, they're very dangerous. We need to be very careful about money, fame, and power. You see, there's a tendency for us to give them the priority that really belongs only to God. Um, and when we do spend too much time worrying about or being concerned about or being motivated by um, money and things or fame and popularity and power and being able to do things, um, when we are too much putting priority on those things, then that crowd's got out of the picture. And we may not make a conscious decision that, oh, I'm going to make this a priority, but our actions, the little decisions we make about what we say and do and think, ultimately um, cause us to elevate these things into idols, into things that get in the way of our relationship with God and our relationship with others that get in the way of the reason why God made us. So why do you exist? Do you remember? You exist so God can love you, but you also exist so that you can love God and love others, not love money, fame, and power. So here's another love killer to avoid, being bound by the past, bound by the past. Some of us haven't put the past in the past, but have put it right there in the front of us. Maybe we've dealt with some difficult family issues in our past. Um, maybe we come from a troubled family. Maybe we deal with a lot of blame right now, or we're, um, we're controlled by our own failures and weaknesses. Our past is, is interfering with our present and our future because we're just too concentrated on our own weaknesses and failures. Maybe we suffer from shame that's debilitating. Um, scripture says that those take those things off and instead pursue Christ alone. Pursue a love relationship with Christ. Make him your target, your goal. Pursue Jesus. Uh, assigning God to the ER. Avoid that. Avoid assigning God to the ER. Most of the folks who call themselves Christians have an ER God. What do I mean by that? Well, they're glad that God exists, uh, just like they're glad that ERs exist, but they don't want to hang out in ERs and they don't want to hang out with God. They're glad if they get hurt or they have a problem that there is some place that they can go to get help. Um, and that's how they kind of think of God. He's their fire insurance, if you get my meaning. Um, but if they don't have a relationship with God, they stand in danger of losing of that relationship that they have with him. They stand in danger of losing faith and losing the benefits and blessings that come along with it. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit, all the blessings that God wants to give. Um, certainly, the more we develop our relationship with God, the more of those blessings and help we get. But when we don't, um, and we sort of say, well, that ER is always going to be there. Well, maybe he won't be one day when we fail to connect our relationship atrophies and uh, there's distance and maybe it becomes difficult. Our relationship atrophies and can even die. When you stay away from God, when you stay away from his people, when you stay away from his law and gospel, look out, avoid having an ER God. Number four, walk with the one you love. Walk with the one you love. Genesis 3 verse 9. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? When your love relationship with God is right, you'll be in fellowship with the Father. When your love relationship with God is right, you'll be in fellowship with the Father. Adam and Eve walked in the garden with 
God. God walked with them. And they walked together in perfect love and harmony. It was a great relationship. But then sin came, and then what happened? Well, they hid themselves. They hid themselves from God, and they did more, right? They went and they found um, leaves and such and clothed themselves. There was something that changed about their appearance and the way that they looked each other after sin entered into the world. I think it's similar to um, what happened with Moses. Moses uh, be, glowed when he first came off of the, the mountain where he had spent so much time and experienced God in a great way uh, at Mount Sinai and received the commandments and, and his face was glowing. The people could see this and they, he put a veil over his face. Why? Well, to hide the fact that that glow was diminishing. Um, I think that he, he glowed because he was with God in the same way that Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration and Jesus himself were transfigured. They, there was something that shone in their appearance. I think Adam and Eve actually uh, looked different. They looked better. They had glorified bodies uh, because that's how God created them in the first place. And, and now that glory was gone. Uh, because they were now not perfect. They were no longer trusting fully in God. And, and so uh, they covered themselves to, to um, hide that fact from each other, that they were different now, that things were not good anymore. Um, so what did God do after Adam and Eve sinned? Well, he pursued them, of course. He pursued them in love. So here they disobeyed him, they disbelieved him, but he pursues them anyway. And he says, where are you? Where are you? Because they're hiding. He's not the one who left the garden. They're the ones that are off hiding somewhere. Um, and, and even when they're disobedient, God longs to be close to them. God longs to be close to them. And as I shared earlier, he makes a promise then uh, to save them and to save all of humanity uh, through them. Spending time alone with God doesn't bring us into a relationship with him. Our relationship with him brings us into a time alone with God. God has an appointment with me every day, every day. He comes to me and says, Ken, where are you? And sometimes I just leave him there on the kitchen table and I don't spend time with him. And I am not as um, blessed. I am not as fulfilled. I am not as strengthened. I am not as encouraged. And I don't feel as loved than if I do spend time with him. Make the priority of your life to love God with all your heart. Make the priority of your life to love God with all your heart. When you make that a priority, then you'll want to spend time with God. While we may learn something in our time with God, the primary reason to spend time with him is because you love each other and enjoying being together. Um, maybe you've met a very special um, person in your life and, and you just love spending time with them. And I can tell you that that relationship that you get so much out of is not going to give you the benefits that you want unless you actually spend some time with that person, unless you build that relationship up, unless you have shared experiences together, unless you uh, spend quality time together. So I have an assignment for you, just to help you to get closer to God. Now, some of you are thinking, oh no, um, I do want to experience God more in my life. I do want to discover his will, but I don't want homework. Well, I figured you might need help in getting closer to God. And uh, that means that you may need to get out of your comfort zone. You might need to make a couple of little short sacrifices. And I'm, I'm gonna give you this assignment um, to help you to do that. To help you to do that. So here you are. Uh, and by the way, this is all uh, written in your note sheet too. If you didn't print that out, I encourage you to print it out. Put it somewhere where you can get to this so you can go ahead and do this assignment. So walk with God. Set aside at least 30 minutes for a time to walk with God. Take a walk, preferably outside. I know it's really, really 
hot. You don't have to walk outside. I've done this effectively inside as well. Um, but walk with God, uh, take a walk, preferably outside. Uh, maybe you could get up early when it's a little bit cooler in some of these mornings we've been having and talk preferably out loud with God. You may want to do that quietly so that your neighbors don't think you're just absolutely crazy. You might even want to put earbuds in so it looks like you're singing along rather than talking to yourself. Or you can just talk to yourself. I do it all the time. So um, preferably out loud. Focus your thoughts on God's love for you and your love for him. Be specific. Express your love and thank him for his. Think of all the ways that he has shown love to you, all the blessings, all the things that, that he's done, who he has been for you in your life, how he's been there for you. Express your love and thank, and thank him for his. Afterward, write down the answers to the following questions. By the way, if you really say, no, I don't have time or the ability to go for a walk outside, um, you can do this at your kitchen table or a quiet place um, and then just write these things down and maybe write some things down while you're there since you're not out walking and speaking out loud. Uh, sometimes it helps to journal kind of the thanks and the things that God has done for you and, and the things, how, how you want to love him and, and maybe write how you love him. Um, pick whatever you think is going to be most helpful for you, whatever you're most likely to do at this point. So here are the questions. How do you feel? How did you feel as you walked and talked with God? And you notice there's not a lot of space in your note sheet to do this. I'm not talking like writing a whole paragraph. I mean, if that's what motivates you, if you're encouraged by that, go ahead, knock yourself out. But a sentence would do, uh, or even just a few words uh, that help express the answer to these questions. How did you feel as you walked and talked with God? What aspect of your love relationship with God did you become aware of? If this was difficult or emotionally uneasy, why was it? What happened that was especially meaningful or joyful? I can assure you that if you do this, God will indeed bless you and you will experience God in a new way. Um, so give it a shot, give it a try. Uh, I look forward to my time that I'm gonna spend with God. And hopefully you're looking forward to yours too. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for showing your love by sending your son as a sacrifice for our sins, for giving us the opportunity to store up eternal treasures in heaven and for longing to be with us even when we've disobeyed you. We thank you for the birth of Henry Carl Schneider to Catherine and John, for funds given to our Therefore Go Building Fund, for all of the blessings and resources that you have entrusted to our care and your promise to multiply them to build a bigger heaven and better lives. We ask you to inspire and empower us to do what's best for others, even if it means sacrifice for us, to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind, to store up treasures in heaven, and to have a heaven-focused heart. We pray that you bless missionary vicar Chad and the people of the table of Los Fresnos as they reach out to people in Harlingen and beyond. We pray for a renewed Tanzanian work permit for missionary Cheryl that you would bless our government to provide justice and protection for the good of all, that you would bless our leaders with your wisdom and guidance that they would lead according to your will, that you would bless victims of hatred, persecution, violence, and disaster, that you would bless students and educators for sobriety for those with addictions. We pray for um, blessings for Chris and Adam as they await the adoption of their son, for healthy pregnancy and delivery for Stephen and Emily, that you would bless and protect our deployed troops and their families, especially Stephen, Matthew, Isaac, Brandon, and Taylor. We pray for employment for Greg, Dennis, and Emily. We pray for the Molina and Pizarro families as they grieve a major change. We pray for the family and friends of Susan, Elizabeth, Rose, Jim, Bubba, as they mourn their deaths. We pray for physical health and economic recovery. We pray that you would bless Cecilia and her family, that you would heal Carrie, Jerry, Bob, Cheryl, Kathy, Patty, Peggy, Clarion, Melody, Neil, Jean, Ray, Coleman, Hayden, Rick, Paul, Kathy, Dodd, Patty, Bethany, Bobby, Jill, William, Cheryl, Brianna, Sheldon, Jason, Cerise, Baby Rylan, that you would heal Rick and Diane, Aubrey, Joseph, Ruby, Forrest, Faith, Sam, Charlie, Marianne, Larry, Ginger, Mr. and Mrs. Scott, Greg, June, Phil, Jan, TJ, Rufus, Morgan, Chris, Bobby Kay, Bud, Emma, Riley, Lyle, and Mia. 
We pray that you would heal those battling cancer, especially Susan, Joan, Marsha, Lola, Greg, Carrie, Jennifer, Pastor Al Struckmeyer, Elaine, Kathy, Jeanette, Destiny, Sarah, Jennifer, Starlin, Brandy, Adriana, Chuck, and to strengthen their families, to help those we now name in our hearts and minds. and to connect people to Jesus and his kingdom. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Thanks again for joining us for worship this morning. With uh, this Experiencing God topic, we're actually going to dig a little deeper and do a Zoom Bible study on this topic. So if you're watching this anytime before Sunday morning at 1045, then you have the opportunity to join us online for a Bible study, 1045 Sunday morning on Experiencing God. Pastor Ken will lead this study and go deeper into this topic. The Zoom link and other information is all in the announcement sheet, so be sure and download that for information. Also, we have the opportunity to help those in our community who are in need through our Operation Backpack program. This is starting up again. It looks a little different this year because of how different school looks this year, but children still need to eat and we still need to help them. So we're partnering with communities and schools once again in order to provide food for children in need. There's more information in your announcement sheet. Be sure and take a look at that. We need some additional volunteers to help with this program. We're still monitoring the situation with COVID-19 in order to figure out the best time for us to return to in-person worship. We'll keep you updated on that. But as we continue with that situation, we remind you to look at the announcement about Park to Pray. As you're in the community, you drive past a school, a nursing home, an emergency care clinic, pull in and spend some time in prayer. Ask God to help heal those who've been affected by this disease. Ask God to protect those who are caring for those with this disease. Ask God to bless the families who are, who are mourning the loss of friends or who are dealing with um, ill family members. This is a great opportunity for us to battle this disease in our community with the best resource we have available, the power of prayer.